Hello and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. This particular video is going to be the culmination of what I've been leading up to on the NTP series that I've been writing about on my website at www.ronnutter.com. This time I've gotten a hold of the uh, GPS receiver from the folks at Adafruit and have gone through the process of getting it integrated into the Raspberry Pi so that I now have my own NTP server that uses the GPS satellites as a time source. If you go out and buy one of these, you know, commercially made, you're looking at fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars for with the ones I've seen for the most part. So let's go ahead and we'll get logged in here. And the next thing we'll do is we gotta make sure that it sees the USB console cable and what I've done is I've gotten the same console cable that I usually talk to on my Raspberry Pi talking to the GPS uh, receiver from Adafruit and you see down there at the bottom it shows as the 2303 serial port and just to make sure that we've got everything hooked up right we'll next go check that we're getting data from the receiver and we are now sometimes when you do this you'll get just a few lines and it stops and other times you'll actually have to do a control C bottom line is that you know we are seeing data so we got it hooked up right there is very good instructions on the Adafruit side on what the pinout is so I'm not gonna go over to that here so the next thing we will do is get the modules installed that we're gonna have to have And got one more here. So it's going to go out and check what it needs to get in terms of packages. And since I first started doing it, it's actually added a couple of packages along the way. So that's not a bad thing. So we'll say yes and it'll start downloading. So depending on how fast your internet connection is will depend in part on how fast this goes and also the SD card that you're using. I've had different speeds on how quickly it does the compiling and booting up and I found that directly relates to not just the quality of the card but you know how fast that card is capable of running. So that if you see a little bit difference in speed of how mine's responding versus how yours is then that's going to have something to do with it, but it's not a, a big problem. And we're getting down close to the, the end here when it gets everything compiled and ready to go. Okay, and at this point, we're pretty much ready to go. So the program that you're going to use to see what's going on with the GPS is this one right here, the CGPS. Now, it's saying it's not running, so we're going to go look at the GPSD status. Okay, now it's not coming back with anything. So what we will do is sudo. Oh, that's because I didn't do sudo service GPSD status. Okay, unrecognized. Well, of course, if you type right, again, it, they don't have artificial intelligence built into this just yet. It says it's running, but I've not always had that come up the way it should. So we'll do a sudo service GPSD restart. I did the same thing again, restart. And now we can just do the up arrow and now you're seeing the program as it should come up. So something about when it automatically started, it didn't come out right. So this is the part that you may have a problem with and there's actually a lock file that's in place. So what we'll do is we do a sudo kill all gpsd 
and sudo gpsd dev tty usb zero space dash capital f space var run gpsd sock and sudo service ntp restart and now if we've gotten everything done just right you should see a lot come through almost immediately on the on the status 3d fix and this is showing you the number of satellites that it's picked up and the ones it's actually using for signal so if it says yes it's using those and that's showing you the time as it's seeing it come off the satellites and if you've got a 3d fix that says you've got a sufficient number of satellites going on that it can get the information from this one right here this time offset this is the magic thing right here to look at because that is the one that if everything's working right that figure may be fluctuating but it should never be climbing if it's climbing then there's a problem with how something is configured or, or it got compiled and what the only way I've been able to get it to work right at that point is to just simply recreate everything I've and when I've had this happen I've had it happen a couple of times I never was able to find what the the real cause was it was just faster just to recreate the SD card and then put everything in place but this one I can tell by the way it's working the the figure the figure is fluctuating so that says everything is working the way it should so now we're ready to go on to the next part of integrating the GPS receiver into the NTP time source okay now that we've got that part done and that really was, was the, the the most intensive part of it now we can just make a few minor changes and then you'll have a fully functional NTP server with a GPS reference so we'll exit out of that and the next change we have to make using our good old friend nano is in the ntp.conf file and we'll go down here and by default Raspbian puts in four external references you can leave those in there and put the GPS first and that way if the GPS receiver does go down or you lose your your lock on the satellites which has the potential for happening in severe weather situations you would still have a known link to the outside world but you know we've got a good antenna and we've got a good clear shot at the sky so that's not going to be a problem so we'll do server space 127.127.28.0 space minpol 4 and then fudge 127.127.28.0 time 1 space 0.183 ref id n m e a all right we'll save that we'll go yes enter now in order to get this all to take what we're going to, have to go through is we've got to restart ntp so we'll should just be able to do here and we'll just make sure to do a clean cover on everything we'll do a sudo space kill all gps kill all gpsd and we'll do sudo gpsd dev tty usb zero space dash f var run gpsd sock and then sudo service ntp restart now we'll go back in here to what I call the control panel for the GPS and this verifies that we're still getting signal and you see the time offset is fluctuating it's going you know a little up a little down so we're, we're set to go there and then we'll go into the NTP query program which is NTPDC and we'll do a dash P and this is going to show us it's showing us using the shim driver this shm that's over here now sometimes you will see delay and offsets here other times 
you won't. It's just a matter of when you pull it. See, we just pulled it this time again real quick, so there was an offset. As long as you see these numbers changing, that's a good sign that all is well. If you see it staying static and it just never changes, then that says you've got another problem. But with the other, uh, what I call our, our GPS control panel, with this being there, then everything's set to go. The only thing you'll want to do is make sure you've got your time zone set so that you know, when you've got the systems you know, to pointing to your Raspberry Pi that you've got your time zone config set up. And that is done by the Raspberry config. And what you do is you go up here and set time zone and it's going to wait for just a little bit because it's got to do some work in the background and in our case we'll select us and press enter and since i'm in the midwest i'll select central and it's showing you the change it's already going to put into effect and then it's finished of course anytime you make a change you will need to do a restart pseudo service NTP restart. Otherwise, it's never going to know you made that change. And depending on what may have been going on at the instant you did it, you may have to do that complete restart like we talked about earlier where you were doing the kill all of GPSD, uh, the GPSD sock. But most time, if you're working with just NTP, all you'll probably need to do is just doing that pseudo service restart and then you should be good to go there are a couple of other files of note and what we'll do is we'll do a tail var log syslog now don't be too worried about this last line you're seeing here this gpsd shout in the research that I did, this indicates that it is not recognizing the GPS hardware with what it knows about. So far in, in the work I've done with this, that doesn't seem to be a big problem. Uh, it's more one of those, it thinks it's got a problem and that's it. And then the other one we can look at is var log messages. And... You'll just see, you, you normally look these as kind of some startup messages when, depending on what's going on. And then, yeah, this one, since I'm not running IPv6, is really not a problem. So, you know, in just a few minutes, we've gone from just having a plain old Raspberry Pi to having one now that can function as an NTP resource for your network. I did get the... Uh, GPS receiver from the folks at Adafruit. And there is an adapter cable that you will need to get to go from the very small connector that's on the circuit board to an external active antenna. Now, you don't have to have that, but this then means you've got to have your GPS receiver where it's got a shot at the sky, which may or may not be practical depending on the particular configuration you've got i just went ahead and got the receiver that way i would make sure that you know i wouldn't have a problem because especially in the times of year when foliage is out you need to get as good a signal as you can and depending on what axis you have at the sky if you've got a if a tree is blocking your clear path then that antenna will give you a little bit extra oomph to uh to get a good signal other than that that's it folks we've uh you know, got it up and running. So thank you very much for your time, and we'll see you again soon. For more articles on the Raspberry Pi, please go to my website at www.ronnutter.com.